Coming up on the AFN Europe Report. We're live from Luxel Le Bon, France this evening where the town people pull out all the stops for American veterans who liberated the city 67 years ago. The French people are so gracious and hospitable and generous. We'll hear incredible stories from the men of our greatest generation. And then all of a sudden, boom, you know, that sucked on one of those lines. Bonsoir, we're coming to you live from Luxal Le Bon with the beautiful Abbey behind us as the town celebrates their liberation, which happened 67 years ago this very weekend. It's been a full three days of events honoring the veterans who liberated this town so many years ago. The nearby town of Redon was the site of heavy fighting and heavy losses for the U.S. Army in France during the Second World War. In our first story, Air Force Sergeant Joshua Perigen takes us to a memorial for a veteran who never made it home. The village of Redon is eight kilometers from luxeau le -Bon, and it saw some of the heaviest fighting in September of 1944. Today, the people of Redon are paying homage to Harold Messerschmitt. Harold and 18 other American soldiers died saving this village. Harold paid the ultimate sacrifice and died on the nearby hill overlooking the village. He was awarded the Medal of Honor for his bravery. Among the crowd are American veterans who fought to free this town, and even Harold Messerschmitt's great nephew, Michael. Harold and his bravery and the Medal of Honor um, have always been important to the family, and uh, we take great pride in that. And ha having the ability to come here to France, to Radon, to uh, see the actual site where he died, um, it's like closure or it's just another piece to the puzzle that we're given so graciously by the French people. Uh, having the ability to go out and, and visit the site where he died uh, after reading about it for so many years um, was, was, was very moving and very impressive and it, it great honor. Braving machine gun, pistol, and rifle fire, Harold fearlessly moved from man to man along the 40-yard wall, encouraging his troops to hold the line against the countless Germans surging up the hill. Upon being mortally shot, he immediately jumped to his feet, returning fire, killing five and injuring numerous other enemies. When his ammunition ran out, he used the butt of his gun to fend off the attacking foes, including saving the life of a wounded comrade. His wounds led to his death. In Harold's citation, which I read every year to my students as a, uh, for Veterans Day, uh, it describes that he went, moved back and forth along this 40-yard rock wall, uh, encouraging his troops. And the fact that yesterday, uh, my mother and I were able to go out and stand uh, at that wall and envision the, him running down the hill after he ran out of ammunition and using the butt of his gun as a, a weapon um, was pretty moving. In closing, let us remember that anything worth having has to be fought for. We are free Americans and free French with locked arms ready to battle those that would seek to destroy our freedoms and way of life. God bless America. God bless France. May we never forsake one another on the field of honor. The ties between America and France were strengthened by the fires of war and those bonds remained just as strong as they did that fateful day 67 years ago. Air Force Sergeant Joshua Perigen, Luxel Le Bon, France. As you just saw in Sergeant Perigen's story, Harold Messerschmitt was one of thousands of American soldiers who never made it home. In our next story, AFN's Rolla Setmiller tells us about three survivors, all veterans from the same war, all with three different stories. 67 years ago, these three men became part of what is now known as the greatest generation. PFC Noel Gussler, 2nd Lieutenant John Shirley, and PFC Michael Halick. Three young men, three fighters, three survivors. Each has a story to tell. For Noel Gussler, or just plain old Gus as he prefers, one of his more vivid memories involves a tank, a bridge, and a Nazi sniper in a steeple. It's all documented in an official third ID book on World War II. We 
went across the bridge. We walked across the bridge, but the bridge would not hold a tank, and we had to get across in a hurry. So they tried it, and the tank fell through. And then when it did, the Germans was in, a, in Emmerswear, I believe it was, and they had a, a lookout in the church steeple, and it was rough that night. You know? John Shirley's closest encounter with the enemy came when SS troops captured him in Benware, France. For him, a spontaneous decision paid off immensely. So I was the only one when we were captured uh, alone. The six wound, five wounded men were helped by six, five unwounded men. And as a German uh, private led us down the main street and then the ten men, then I kept lagging back a little bit and uh, had my hands up. And the German the corporal in the rear, he came up and said, Mark Snell. And he touched me on the shoulder and I turned and hit him on the chin. I don't know why, but I did. He fell. I got off into the rubble and got back to our lines. And, so I got to three months in a hospital in England. So I tell people that was on December 23rd. I tell people that was the best Christmas present I've ever had because I got out of combat for three months. For PFC Michael Halick, his encounter with the enemy came in the form of an anti-personnel mine while storming the beaches of Saint-Tropez, France. And I followed, and I got under maybe uh, 20 feet or so, and then all of a sudden, boom. And I had sucked on one of those mines. And I lay there about uh, maybe four hours waiting for this, someone to come. They put me back on the, one of the craft, the landing craft, took me to uh, the, the hospital ship that was offshore. And this was taken to the hospital. After the war, all three men, along with thousands and thousands more, went back home and quietly closed this chapter of their lives. Now it's up to the children of France, of America, and every country where American blood is shed to remember their fight and know why they truly were the greatest generation. Rolla Sutmiller, Luxel Le Bon, France. The townspeople of Radon and Luxel make it a point to honor those who helped liberate them. And they really rolled out the red carpet for the surviving veterans and families of the fallen soldiers. The weekend opened with a ceremony honoring all the soldiers killed in World War II. Over the next few days, there was a memorial unveiling, a concert, and parades. There was even time to recognize volunteer American pilots killed in World War I while flying with the Lafayette Escadrille. The townspeople came out in huge numbers to celebrate and show their support for U.S. military of past and present with a parade down the very streets that were liberated in 1944. The French people are so gracious and hospitable and generous and and appreciate their liberation so much. And so they involve the children and, and the, the children make things that they give to us. So we're grateful for their expressions of appreciation and their friendship. The veterans took on an honorary status with photo ops and handshakes. Even the French children participated in the ceremony, singing and reading poems. We are the children, children of the liberty and we say thank you. They presented the veterans with handmade drawings. One of the children's teachers helped them learn about the history of their village and about who liberated them so many years ago. It's important for the children to be here today to represent France and, to, and not to forget uh, what happened a uh, uh, few years ago. At an indoor reception, the veterans were made honorary citizens of the village. Two Frenchmen who aided the Americans in Luxale's liberation received tokens of appreciation from the U.S. Army in Europe, honoring them alongside our veterans. And Lieutenant General Hurdling gave a star note today through me uh, to represent um, our appreciation for what they did for our forces uh, in World War II. The whirlwind weekend of events kept the veterans moving from place to place. The atmosphere of unity was emphasized by a spontaneous singing of the third ID song by veterans, French reenactors, and anyone who knew the lyrics. Yeah, 
That impromptu rendition of the Dog Face Soldier song was far from the only entertainment for the weekend. A special group of performers made the trek from Germany for the festivities. Air Force Sergeant Nathan Perry gives us a closer look. Throughout the U.S. Army Band, and the mayor, Congressman Raison, was so enthused and crazy about them that he asked me to have them coming over again. So tonight we are welcoming the fabulous United States Army Band. Those words kicked off a concert by the United States Army Europe Band for the people of Luxelle Le Bon, France. The soldiers of swing rocked a full house with classic swing and big band music from the days of World War II. The band was invited to celebrate the 67th anniversary of the town's liberation. It was a weekend full of events, but for the band and the audience alike, the highlight was Saturday night's concert. That particular kind of music is just really interesting to me. It's not my, quite my forte, and I like it. That's why I like playing with these guys. Good experience for me. I like I like this kind of music. Classic American music. It's, just, it's fun to play. The band performed in parades, memorial ceremonies, and as tradition, taps. Taps is a very solemn um, well, song or bugle call, and um, it's a very important song to play when when you lay someone to rest or you're remembering somebody. You know, I feel sad and proud to, to, to do it. Um, I hope to convey that you know, proudness to the people to you know, remember the person that you know, we're celebrating. The band played, people cheered, and their cheering went beyond their love of the music. It extended to how they felt about American soldiers. I love seeing the French people's appreciation for what we did and what we do now. In a small village in eastern France, an American band with their French audience honored the past and celebrated a friendship. From Lixelle Le Bon, France, I'm Air Force Sergeant Nathan Perry. Coming up, we'll meet the woman who planned this weekend's events and has dedicated the past 15 years of her life to honoring the Americans who liberated France. <laughs> Loyalty to me is, is committing yourself to your duties and your responsibilities, uh, be it your family, your friends, uh, your work, uh, just so long as you're, you know, you don't turn your back on them when they need you most. Like if we're put in a situation we, when it gets tough, you, you definitely have to stay by your friend even if you want to quit and you got to keep going, but your loyalty to them is what makes you keep going, like to help them in a situation or help them get out of a situation. Welcome back to this special edition of the AFN Europe Report. We're coming to you from Luxelle, Le Bon, France, and we have with us the event coordinator, Ms. Jocelyn Papillard. Now, Jocelyn, there aren't many World War II veterans still living today. Why is it important for the younger generations to understand their sacrifice? As you said, you know, there are very few veterans. They die a thousand a day. And since the limelight was focused on the uh, Normandy veterans, here it's Seventh Army territory. I wanted the children of our district to know their liberators. Now you put so much work and your own time into this. Why do you do it? Because I love America and uh, I want everybody to recognize the sacrifices of our past soldiers. Now you put so much time and effort. Do you get nearly as much out of it as you put into it? A thousand more, I get much more because when I see the veterans happy to relieve their, uh, their young lives, seeing places where they had been when they, are young, where we, they were young, and uh, I see them happy and with tears in their eyes, I just, you know, for me, it's wonderful. Okay, now I understand that you have a little something you'd like to say to some people that might be watching out there? Yes, I would like to salute the soldiers of the T-Patch Division, the 36 who liberated Luxeuil. And I would say, I would like to salute the Thunderbirds who liberated the District 2, in particular, 
um, Lieutenant Colonel Bobby Yando. Thunderbirds, watch out. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time and You're thanks welcome. for watching this special live edition of the AFN Europe Report. We'll leave you now with some images from the weekend's events.